Hi, my name is Cami Kotler and I played Elizabeth on the Waltons and uh, we're going to be making a little video talking about The Foundling, which was the first episode of the Waltons TV series ever aired. So now we are on the porch and it's Grandma and Grandpa and Mama and Mary Ellen with Little Holly See? and Elizabeth Stahl is sitting next to her. I, a cat has joined us, if, if you haven't noticed. But she's not quite comfortable yet, so give her a minute. I'm sorry, are we in your way? Anyhow, so in this scene, Mary Ellen's teaching Holly, uh, or trying to teach Holly to say some words or to be able to spell some words. You can right. notice Ellen, as Grandma, is um, Chair. is crocheting yeah. another doily. Stands for that. I think Erica Hunton, who plays Holly, right. does such a nice job just looking well, confused and thoughtful. Inside. She'd done some work before our show. She came back on our show, I guess, in season eight to play a mean girl who was mean to Elizabeth. It wasn't deaf. And now we're at the um, school scene. I love the interplay between Richard and Tammy Beulah. Um, Tammy Beulah had been acting for some years um, in lots of guest starring roles in different TV series when she got Marsha Woolery. She actually went on in real life to become a nurse. But she's so strong against Richard. He's such a talented actor and, and she's created, I think, such a convincing part. Um, you'll notice, and I love Judy's reaction here, her hair is really light in this. I think this may be because they um, they attempted to dye kids' hair red. Some of our some of our cast members um, who weren't redheads, and it didn't work very well. Um, so I think that lighter hair might be from their attempt to dye Judy's hair red. Okay, now we're going into God sees mercantile. This was a great set. Um, this was a fun set to play on, and you could just. You could play store there, right? And store is one of those classic things that children play. So normally if it wasn't being used, almost everything was still there. It was dark because they wouldn't light sets unless they were using them, but you could still see and you could play games. Um, and there were lots of things to interact with. There was a giant um, coffee grinder that you could try to work. There was a pool table and sometimes the pool balls were left behind and you could like play with the balls and drop them in the you know, there was the, the cracker barrel that had about that much crackers in it. Um, and you could eat the crackers, but they were stale. So there's just things to do on this set. And I remember this scene because of the gumdrops. Notice I hit my mark without looking at it this time. And you'll notice in this scene how pale I am and how pale Mary is. Um, and, and Erica, who plays Holly, is pretty pale too. David has a natural tan. Um, and Judy is a little more tan too, but that's just us. Like they didn't put any makeup that first year. Erica's doing a beautiful job not listening to us, right? Which is really hard when you're seven years old to pretend you can't hear. And you should know that there's no glass in the top part of that candy case. I think there's glass maybe in the front, but definitely not in the top. Because we would come in and just reach our hands through the place where the glass was supposed to be and steal candy. Or at least I would. The reason there's no glass is to stop reflection, because there are all those lights on, on the set. Okay, so he gives me gumdrops, and I take those gumdrops, and every time we did the scene in rehearsal, he gave me gumdrops, right? So I would take them and smash them really tightly in my hand, and I remember this. And I think I must have had pockets in those rompers, because I would shove it in the pocket. And I thought I was being terribly clever, because every time we had the scene, We've, every time we practice it, he would give me gumdrops, and I would put them in my pocket, and I never gave the gumdrops back. And then every time we filmed the scene, he would give me more gumdrops, and I'd put them in my pocket. So I had a huge, huge handful of gumdrops by the time we were done, um, which I thought was really wise of me. So this area, the back lot, was called the jungle, and it was essentially just dirt roads with lots of greenery. Um, and the way the back lot worked was you had... Um, the jungle roads, and there were really just two or three of them, connected the flats where the Godsey House and the Haunted House are to uh, Drusilla's Pond. So there were two pond sets. Um, the bigger one was Drusilla's Pond, and then there was a smaller one that we use sometimes. And then on the other side of those um, two locations was Western Street, where Warner Brothers filmed all their westerns. 
And we also used, we used Western Street sometime for rockfish. Um, some events, like if there's a horse race or something that happens in town, would, would take place in Western Town. And then the church we used in later years, um, when we stopped using the school set for the school and the church, was uh, located on Western Street too. So something I wasn't really aware of as a kid was someone had to build these sets, right? I suppose the flow of it was there was a department for everything. There was a department for greenery, there was a department for building exterior sets, there was a department for, for dressing the interior sets and making sure there's furniture and, and books and, and curtains and lamps and all the things you'd find in a space like that. And it was true that on the edges of the lot were all these big warehouses or big workshops where they had all different kinds of saws and, and equipment and gear and they could make anything. Um, so I guess in a situation like this when when the director's first reading the script he shares it with the set designer who reads through and just must read pencil. Okay we're gonna need a haunted an old ramshackle house to look like a haunted house. And then sometimes they have um, they like keep the walls just lined up like books someplace in like a warehouse and then they know okay I have something similar that we use for something else and they'll pull out those walls and just quickly assemble the house on site um, and then bring in this, the, the set dressers and the greens people to put you know old weeds and um, broken bits of things in front of it so everything you see here was was assembled for this and then I think that house went away because I know it wasn't there say when we did the carnival um, or the Ferris wheel, that whole space was full of, of um, carnival rides. Thanks for watching this part of uh, Cami Narrates the Foundling. Uh, if you want to know when the next part is uploaded, go ahead and click on the little bell, and that will make sure that YouTube notifies you when we've uploaded the next part. Hope you enjoyed it.